Hello and welcome to the world today. We're going to discuss Argentina, where a change of government a few months ago has already created havoc in the country. People have been on the streets a number of times. There have been strikes. Uh, there have been expressions of anger and even surprise at the speed with which the new president, Macri, has proceeded uh, with his neoliberal agenda. Of course, the new government is very popular with the financial press, the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times feel that Argentina is now in safer hands, but they are used to saying this about many governments which come to power and promise everything, and then within six months you see the real face of the government, and it can't even deliver on its own terms what it promised the, its friends uh, abroad. Today, my guest is um, Veronica Grondona, who is an economist and a researcher at a cooperative research institute in Buenos Aires. Veronica, thank you very much, and uh, very good to have you with us today. Could we start by you telling us as to why the previous government collapsed in the way it did. After all, the opinion polls, if I remember correct, were not showing a big victory for Macri. We thought that the Peronists would still be in power, albeit with a reduced majority. And yet the opinion polls were proved wrong, as in other parts of the world when the results finally came in. And we had a new right-wing president in Argentina. What happened? First of all, there's uh, been an international crisis going on. And although Argentina has been managing to move along and, and still have uh, an increase in its gross domestic product of 2.1% uh, last year, um, there was, uh, though, an, a fall on the export prices. So there was. Um, an impact on the exports and a pressure uh, in our balance of payments in relation to our level of imports. So, the, so we started having um, negative yes, results on the balance of payments, which put a pressure onto, uh, or, um, onto the government. Such was that pressure that uh, both parties that were uh, presenting themselves as presidential candidates, uh, Macri and Scioli, they were both uh, including in their agenda, a reduction of the export tariffs. So uh, that was one of the, of the issues on, on the agenda, although they weren't, uh, Scioli's proposition was not as uh, extreme as Macri, he, he did need uh, to, uh, to include that into the agenda. The other thing was that there's been an inflation over the last years, that it's been of um, 25, 28, 30 percent, um, and uh, that has produced uh, 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 um, some problems uh, among workers in uh, their negotiation for sa in salary increases. Um, so there's some discontent in relation to inflation that's been going on for the last years. There's also um, some uh, political movement to the right in, in the whole region. There's a whole pressure of uh, the United States and, uh, and the OECD for a change in, uh, in government. And there's also a local problem with communications. There had been a change into the uh, communications legislation, which allowed for more participation and some sectors and monopolies, local monopolies, uh, or the local monopoly was, was uh, very discontent uh, with that. So uh, th those were some of, uh, of the factors um, that uh, produced uh, this crisis, but and there's also there was also a lack of uh, of presidential candidates uh, from the Kirchnerism party. So that that was uh, basically, I think, some of the the problems. So you think a combination of all these factors, yeah, uh, led to Macri's uh, victory, which was quite narrow, as you point out. Just tell us a bit, uh, Veronica, about Macri. Where does he come from? What are his politics? We all know he's a rich businessman. There's talk today in the media. 
in Europe that uh, he has been exposed partially by the Panama Papers. I don't know whether that's true or not, but um, who is this guy? And what did he pose as to win the election? Well, Macri is uh, the son of a businessman. He's not known as, um, as a very big successful businessman himself. But, um, well, in relation to Panama uh, Papers, he was, uh, had been working with his uh, dad, uh, Franco Macri, in, uh, in several businesses. And uh, Panama Papers exposed him in at least two um, uh, companies located on, um, on tax havens. Uh, one of them was located in the Bahamas and the other one in Panama, and they actually relate to a third one in Uruguay. Um, the, uh, what the papers expose is that he's a director on one of the companies and he's uh, the vice president, of, vice president of the other company. Macri uh, 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 alleged uh, or tries to, the way he tries to justify those companies, the existence of those companies was that they were going to make an investment in uh, Brazil at some point in time which they um, say that they didn't make. So it's, uh, there's no actually any papers that have been shown. But on that side, we also have another problem, which is that the two press, uh, the two medias that ha are covering the news in here, uh, this means uh, covering in a sense of uh, participating on the research with the uh, consortium of uh, journalists are um, La Nación and Canal 13. It's, uh, it's two medias that are, have been backing Macri for his uh, as a candidate uh, initially and are now backing him in the government. So we only have the information of these two companies. He might be on many others because this is a very big group uh, that has made a lot of deals with the governments in the past and, uh, and that has a lot of local power in here. And what has been the reaction of ordinary people in the streets to Macri's involvement with these companies? Macri's uh, um, changes, he made a lot of changes as a, as a president and one of the changes he made was on the, um, on the modifications uh, that uh, media companies had to make in, really, in order to comply with the media legislation. The media that is uh, backing Macri is, uh, is, has, has more power and more coverage of this uh, on, the, on, on, on the market, uh, as to say it in a way. So uh, there's uh, difficulties for other medias to, to have a a bigger impact on the news. But the sense is that people is not happy and they need for more explanations to be made because there hasn't been enough explanation, but medias are soon covering that up and they're covering it up with uh, corruption cases arising from, um, from Kirchner's government. Of course. Yes, uh, so they're trying to confuse the issue. In other words, saying there, was, there were corruption cases in Kirchner's time and there are corruption cases now. Exactly. You can hear people everywhere saying is that everyone's corrupt and that's the problem uh, in Argentina. And also, <laughs> one of the ways in which the government has attempted to cover itself from this uh, news is uh, to say that everyone, uh, in a way, has a, 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 um, a company in a tax haven because of uh, bureaucratic difficulties in Argentina in order to try to invest on another country. <laughs> Nice yes. one. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Veronica, tell me a bit about who in the country now is in Parliament is backing Macri. What is the position the Peronists have taken? That's um, an interesting question, yes, a uh, very good question. So uh, Macri didn't have a majority when he came uh, into government just uh, December from now, which is not that far <laughs> off in time. Um, and the majority was said to be with the Peronists. But uh, some Peronists have uh, moved sides, in, uh, particularly in the Vulture Fund's uh, vote um, for the change. In, uh, several Peronists moved to Macri's side. Uh, for this voting, and there's no, it's not clear what will happen in the future. Peronists are saying that they will 
uh, be together in other discussions, but there's lately been another discussion into the legislation of the, uh, the media and communications legislation. And uh, that was also uh, won uh, by the government at the lower parliament. Um, it still needs to be discussed at the Senate, but uh, uh, that there are some, uh, some noises, though, on how that discussion was made because there weren't uh, open votes. It wasn't an open votation. There you, you couldn't see who had voted. Ah, it was a secret ballot. Secret pass, yes, exactly. So there's some uh, uh, discussion on to whether all uh, and to the le legitimacy of uh, of that uh, of that votation was the issue of Telesur and the punishment of Telesur that Macri has decreed discussed in Parliament at all or not? No, that wasn't discussed in Parliament. That was just a government measure. Um, which also has to do with uh, this legislation, this communication legislation. First of all, this legislation which had been passed in 2010, it imposed as a requirement that there be some local production uh, in, uh, the con of content, and that uh, media couldn't have 100% of foreign uh, content, for instance, but they needed to have uh, at least 30% of local production, 30% uh, of uh, other national production and, and regional production, and 30%, I think, could be international. Uh, Telesur was taken out of all, uh, of, of, all, uh, of all media, even not complying with the legislation, still in place. Um, and after that, Argentina removed its participation in Telesur. Um, that uh, has to do with what the argument of the government was that Telesur didn't allow for sufficient uh, voices <laughs> to be heard, uh, that it only showed one side of the, <laughs> of the story. But did no one point out to the government that 90% of the Argentinian me media also presents their side of the story. And in, this, and in this big sea where the media is dominated uh, internationally by CNN and BBC World and other networks and in South America by three or four huge monopolies, uh, in, that to have a different voice which reflects the opinions of people whose voices are not heard is part of democratic functioning. Yes, of course it was, and actually one of the leaders today in, uh, um, uh, of the opposition, of today's opposition, is uh, Sabatella, which he was uh, the director of AFSCA, AFSCA which is the, what was the regulatory uh, department uh, regulating the passing of this, uh, the, the application of the legislation. Uh, but he was removed from the building with the police uh, force, and uh, he wasn't allowed inside of the, of the building. And, and because of all these things, uh, are, uh, some, uh, this uh, uh, presentation that has been done uh, has been made into the International um, uh, Court. The International Court. The International Court in, in, in Amsterdam, in, in Holland, or? No, uh, the Inter-American. Inter-American, yeah. Inter-American uh, Court, yeah. So uh, there's a presentation that was made there because of, uh, of, uh, of this and uh, because the Argentina is not, uh, well, it, it's, it's been a, clearly the way Macri has been uh, doing things, he's been doing things that are not uh, through decrees. Uh, all changes are being made through decrees and he's attempting uh, to, um, uh, to get someone on, uh, actually on top of this regulatory framework that was in place and uh, so every, he's been doing everything in a very regular manner and uh, the problem is though that he's now getting uh, an approval from the Congress as you were mentioning before so that's uh, the, the, the fact that the Peronists are not united on their opposition to these measures is uh, getting to be a problem because of course there's a lot of voices complaining and um, uh, a lot of people from media uh, that have been uh, kicked out of, uh, of, um, of state-owned media uh, from one day to the other. I mean, there's been a lot of lays layoffs, uh, but particularly also in national media. 
uh, that has been one of the problems. And, and people who had, weren't laid off were pressed in order to present a renunciation. Even people that had uh, directive uh, positions and that uh, they were uh, supposed to be in place for the ne for next two years because regulations had been made in that way in order for a changing government not to modify uh, these structures and... Uh, How do you think that uh, things are going to evolve over the next six months, uh, Veronica? We've seen quite a lot of images of people protesting, strikes being threatened, strikes actually taking place. Now with the attack on uh, Telesur. I mean, I was thinking, just imagine if the Venezuelans or Chavez or Maduro had said that CNN is no longer permitted to be shown in Venezuela because it's completely biased and represents the point of view of the United States. The entire world's media would have said, censorship, put a stop to it, etc. When, when the friends West of the West operate like this, it's completely ignored. But the way he's behaving, it's also quite erratic, slightly irrational, as if he feels he hasn't got too much time to f do all these things, so he's trying to do them quickly. But uh, what do you think is likely to happen? Well, that's uh, very true. It's, it's been amazing, actually, the first month of uh, Macri's government. It was just uh, one news after the other one, or several on the same days in terms of changes. And uh, you, there's also a lot of um, discontent because there's at least uh, 30,000 people that have been laid off uh, in uh, government jobs. And also other 25 or 23,000 uh, 20, people sorry, that were laid off in the private sector. Um, there's um, a lot of changes that were done uh, into uh, not only in, in terms of media but um, uh, also in other sectors that were completely dismantled um, uh, su such as uh, nuclear energy is now uh, being uh, left without um, without any um, any subsidies from the government, another investment from the government, like in a telecommunications infrastructure company and uh, basic services have risen. Uh, they removed also the subsidies, so there's a 600 percent rise uh, in electric electricity bills. Um, yeah. Six hundred percent. Six hundred percent rise in electricity bills. Um, also, transport uh, prices have risen. Uh, that are also subsidized. Uh, they've been allowed to raise their tariffs uh, on a hundred percent, basically, to duplicate themselves. And um, there's so there's at least fifty percent inflation now because of these rises and uh, also because of the removal of the export tariffs that I was mentioning before, which was made on the first 10 days, I think, of the government, as I recall. And so that uh, removal of the export tariffs uh, and uh, removal of other quotas uh, for exportations that were mandatory for some sectors so they could provide the internal sector, uh, were also made on the first 100 days. So um, now uh, all exporters are allowed in a way to prior prioritize the exports rather than local market and export prices rather than local prices. So that's um, created a huge increase in prices. So a lot of people are on the streets. Uh, are, uh, people are on the streets on this and, uh, because of this and there's a lot of indignation because of this. However, uh, Macri does have some support still. That's, uh, I mean, his support has fallen, but uh, maybe two, three uh, percent, he still has more than uh, 50 percent or close to 50 percent of uh, acceptance in the polls. And uh, because he's justifying all the measures in terms of an alleged crisis in the past. Uh, but yes, you're right in terms of the changes that uh, ch changes in Telesur would have, uh, if they were had been made in CNN, they would have uh, created a lot of the international discomfort. Um, but as uh, it's Telesur and there's uh, some support, one of the first things that Macri said when he came into power was 
uh, that he was going to fight against the di dictatorship in Venezuela and uh, against the fact uh, that uh, uh, um, and, and such problems in Venezuela, which we know actually that Venezuela has a very consistent and democratic go government, which has... Um, well, which has permitted, you know, which has allowed the opposition to win a huge majority in Venezuela in Parliament. I mean, to call it a dictatorship is a bit crazy. Western politicians do that all the time. Exactly. And uh, actually, yeah, the Venezuelan government has allowed for international um, uh, referees to come and, and see during their rotations to, their, their po to see if, uh, if they were democratic or not. So actually that hasn't been done in, any, in many other countries. But that was uh, an alignment that Macri made with the United States in a way. And, uh, and uh, that was also confirmed on the, when Obama came to visit. Now, on the commemoration of uh, the 40 years of uh, of the uh, dictatorship in Argentina, and on such days, Obama came here and he gave a very uh, important. Um, uh, he backed Macri uh, on his on, on his economic changes. Yes. But given mm. you know, I I, I see all this, but given that Argentina has in the past had a very militant history of trade unionism, of working class protests, I know that is on the decline all over the world, but I do wonder whether or not Macri might be surprised if he goes too far, that the response might be strong. I mean, at the moment, people are saying he's only been in power for four months and the Kirshners were in power for decades and give him some more time. But the way in which he is using his time might mean that the, there might be a response sooner rather than later to some of the things he's doing, which, as you've described, are quite horrific. Yes. Um... Yes, let's. Uh, I'm, it's difficult to say what's going to happen in the future, because uh, also uh, trade unions are um, are very strong in Argentina and have been very strong in the past, and they are actually uh, um, st uh, still discussing on the measures and the general um, um, uh, uh, the measures that they will take in relation to all these laid offs, uh, layoffs that have been taking place both in private and public sector and also in relation to um, salaries negotiation and so on. And there's been a lot of people in the streets because of this, actually, because uh, in the past and during Kirchnerism governments and the Ministry of, of uh, Work uh, made it uh, um, an objective or a policy or uh, had among its objectives to take care of uh, people that were being laid off and, and to uh, participate in such negotiation. And now it's been seen that that's also not taking place anymore because layoffs are, are being made in the private sector with no protection from uh, the Ministry of, of Work. So, um, so that's, uh, it's difficult to sense what's going to happen. There's uh, some distress. Uh, they're still trying to, they, they have this time now in which they are, um, and everyone uh, in, I don't know if everyone, but a, a lot of governments do this, that they blame the older problems because of the, of the previous government. So they are using that strategy so far. And they're also using a strategy of minimizing all the current problems that they have. Macri is still promising that he's not going to have any inflation as from mid-year. Uh, and which is uh, basically impossible uh, due to the measure he's, he's taking. But um, it could happen if uh, we went into a recession, though, um, which seems to be the way that we could be going to because of, the, of, this, of such measures. Uh, but still, he has these promises in, uh, in place which could allow for him to be in place uh, um, uh, or for no uh, actual um, disruption to the government to take place. And, and, and as long as he has the media coverage, it's, uh, it's very difficult to, to pass, uh, to, to, to make, uh, to all, for all these, uh, uh, of these people uh, or, or, um, or problems of uh, the, sorry, of, on how people is affected by all these measures to be seen in media. So uh, that imposes another problem and uh, we'll just have to see what's going to, 
to happen. I, I guess also in terms of the Panama Papers. But, but yeah. before you go on, are you saying to me that these big, huge demonstrations taking place are not being reported on uh, Argentine television? No, there's no report when demonstrations take place. They are not being reported. They are only being reported by a few channels and re radios that are still um, uh, opposite to the government. Yes. And, and on the social networks? On social networks, yes, there, there's a bit on social networks, but there's also uh, there's a lot of polarization of the society that has taken place on the last year. I mean, this argument has been used by uh, today's government in the past, but uh, there's something uh, real about it in, in last year. So whenever, um, so these this media and social networks that do take some of this news into uh, in, into place are, are um, in a way disallowed or, dis, uh, or are, are disregarded by uh, people who support Macri because they say that they are not being um, uh, they are not being objective in a way. I mean, uh, for example, in terms of layoffs, there's been thirty thousand people being laid off. The government says it's eleven thousand, but uh, other media say that it's thirty thousand. And, uh, and uh, he, the government can still use the, gov the argument that these people weren't actually doing anything in, in, in the government. Um, I am one of those that was laid off, actually. <laughs> I was at a research institute that was uh, closed down. And, uh, but the general skepticism about, uh, or, or the general image that is being imposed in, uh, in the media is that those people weren't actually doing anything useful. So they, uh, they had to be laid off. So uh, whenever any protest arises, it's just uh, Kirchnerists or Peronists that are protesting against the government. That's the way it is, uh, it is, it is put in place, yes. Uh, the, the, other, the last question I, I wanted to ask you, that Argentina, of course, has a very renowned history uh, for being a country with fairly inde independent-minded uh, intellectuals and public intellectuals. And are they playing a part uh, in, in combating what is going on at the moment or not? Yes, yes, they are. They're still in place and, uh, and there's some movement uh, into that. And, and that's one of the positive things, actually, we are having this interview today at uh, the University of Moreno, where I'm a, a teacher, the National University of Moreno, which was um, uh, basically um, created or, or received a lot of support from the last government. It's, it's, it's in the suburbs. And uh, universities are, at universities, it's, it's very interesting what is happening because uh, there's a, a huge intellectual movement that is going on in terms of uh, or congresses that are being organized on, and even studies that are being organized uh, in relation to these topics. For instance, in terms of the Panama Papers, now there's universities that are thinking of making um, capital flight and, uh, and a, a postgraduate study career, <laughs> just, uh, just to analyze that, uh, which is interesting because it's a uh, it's going into another direction while the government is going into this neoliberal stage. Uh, universities, which uh, sometimes are uh, as, uh, places uh, where ideas uh, concentrate themselves, but in the past, uh, they, it, it's, it's sometimes also difficult for those ideas to penetrate in universities <laughs> at some point because they, they keep on renovating the same ideas. So now uh, it's, it's going uh, at a... It's, these things are happening, and also there's uh, uh, some, uh, yeah, several um, organizations or, or ways in which these intellectuals are organizing themselves, or that they had been organized before, then they are continuing that organization. So th yes, there's a movement, of course. Veronica, thank you very much for uh, talking to us, and no doubt we will talk again as the situation evolves in your country. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the interview, Tariq, and thank you very much. <laughs> Bye.